Nvidia cracks its own mining limiter and Linus makes a pretty tone deaf video, but does it deserve all the hate? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Surfshark is an easy one click VPN that protects your identity online and allows you to browse the web without having to worry about websites stealing your data. Additionally, Surfshark allows you to watch whatever content you want no matter what country you're in. Many apps and services such as Disney Plus or Netflix have different movies available depending on your location, but with Surfshark you can change your online location, allowing you to get the most out of your digital subscriptions. And best of all, you can connect an unlimited amount of devices on a single subscription and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you want to protect your privacy online and get the most out of your online subscriptions, be sure to check the link in the description below and use code graphically to get an incredible 83% off plus 3 months free on a 24 four month purchase. So back when the RTX 3060 was announced, Nvidia revealed that it would have a mining limitation put into place that would actually detect when the Ethereum mining algorithm was being run, and then it would go ahead and actually cut the hash rate in half. Now a lot of people, including me, were actually very excited, you know, and we were hoping that say uh, this mining limiter would extend to all the various different altcoins, and it would effectively lock all the mining uh, operations out from actually being able to purchase the RTX 3060, as it really wouldn't end up being worth it. However, as more and more information started to come forward, it started to look more like a PR move and not like Nvidia actually cared about gamers whatsoever as you know this only actually cut the hash rate in half for Ethereum and it seems like it didn't really affect any other altcoins so of course people immediately found ways to make money with the RTX 3060 anyway and at the launch of the RTX 3060 you really couldn't buy one anyway so yeah it really didn't make any difference and to make things even worse well they actually started selling these CMP HX mining processors with no display outs and you know it looks like Nvidia was actually trying to do this uh, to sell some old GPUs to miners and make sure that they don't end up on the used market so that they don't have to compete with used RTX 3060s in the future. So yeah, it looks like this basically only benefited Nvidia and it started to look a lot more like a PR move than anything else. And well, according to a videocards.com article with the new 470.05 driver, well, it looks like Nvidia has basically cracked their own mining limiter as it looks like that is no longer working whatsoever with this beta driver. So yeah, it looks like this whole thing did end up being just a whole PR move and it really didn't accomplish anything. And the only reason why I believe Nvidia actually did did end up releasing this driver is because you know a little while back they claimed that this uh, driver lock would be, have a secure handshake with the BIOS and it would be quote unquote unhackable. So I think uh, what was happening here is that people were getting pretty close or maybe even did actually unlock it with a new driver or something like that. And so Nvidia, in order to save face, probably just went, you know what, whatever, they're gonna get around it anyway. It's not really doing anything. Uh, we already got our free PR, so let's just go ahead and release a driver uh, that people who you know pay attention will actually just go ahead and download. So they'll just stop trying to break it and then we can claim that nope it was never hacked we just decided to reverse our decision or what, whatever they end up coming forward with as their PR message or whether or not they even make a PR message about this at least they can now say that you know it wasn't ever hacked or whatever at least they can try and claim that but in any case yeah th this is just a whole PR move at this point and so going forward if the 3080 Ti also has a mining limiter put into place I highly doubt that it's really going to do anything now if the 3080 Ti comes out with a uh, new mining limiter that actually blocks all the various algorithms not just Ethereum well then maybe it actually will work if they actually put their full force behind it and really try to stop people from getting around it. But you know, uh, if, with all the money that's to be made, I wouldn't be too surprised if people find a way around that as well. And I just don't see it really making an impact. So yeah, that's unfortunate. And it looks like those RTX 3060 prices are going to stay sky high and they're still going to be really, really hard to get for a long time, at least as long as Bitcoin and Ethereum stay as high as they do. But now let's go ahead and talk about that controversial Linus video. So just the other day, Linus Tech Tips uploaded a video, which I would say was fairly tough tone deaf where uh, they essentially were actually promoting mining. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the full scale mining that wasn't their takeaway. And, you know, I think that what he was saying in the video wasn't really all that bad, but it got a lot of people really angry simply because, well, you know, promoting mining right now is just probably not the right move. There's a lot of people that that's just going to make really, really angry. And what I took away from this video is that he said that if you have old hardware just sitting around, you might as well sit there and mine on it. And, you know, uh, personally, I don't really like cryptocurrency mining and I don't mind with my own hardware, but if you have old hardware sitting around and you want to mine on it, uh, is it a giant waste of energy that's probably bad for the environment? Yeah, it probably is, but if you want to make a couple bucks out of stuff that's just sitting around, uh, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you, and even if I told you not to do it, you wouldn't listen anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But in any case, what are you saying in the video? I didn't really find that offensive. Yeah, it's whatever you, you want to mine with old hardware. Go ahead. But for me personally, I think this is true for a lot of people. What I did find offensive was his sponsor for the video. So his video was sponsored by uh, NiceHash, and if you 
don't know anything about NiceHash. They do have a little bit of a shady history, and I really don't trust this company whatsoever. And I personally would never, ever take a sponsorship from this company just simply because, yeah, I find them to be super, super shady. So if you don't know anything about this company, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit out of an article that comes from Krebs on Security so that you can get an idea of some of the shady stuff that's gone on with this company in the past. And trust me, you're going to want to hear this because it's pretty wild. Uh, so they start out by saying, quote, on December 6, 2017, approximately 52 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin mysteriously disappeared from the coffers of NiceHash. So let's go ahead and stop right there. So right away, that's really sketchy, but I do want to throw this in here. Apparently, I've looked into it and apparently this money was paid back by NiceHash. So that's good to see. It looks like they did try and pay it back. Um, I don't necessarily know whether or not they paid back the Bitcoin itself or the money. If they paid back the money, that means that uh, realistically, that Bitcoin is actually worth a lot more money these days. But if they paid back the Bitcoin, that's good. Okay, that, that's great that they paid it back. But you know, either way, having $52 million worth of Bitcoin just suddenly go poof and disappear from your Bitcoin mining slash trading platform is really, really sketchy. And at the very least, it makes me a little bit nervous about how good their security is over there. Now, of course, I haven't heard anything about any further hacks that have occurred over there. Uh, but either way, yeah, having $52 million disappear at any point in time is not good, whether or not they paid it back. I, again, I'm glad that they paid it back. But yeah, that's not good news. But let's go ahead and read some more because things get even more juicy. So then they go on to say, quote, as the investigation into the heist nears the end of its second week, many nice hash users have expressed surprise to learn that the company's chief technology officer recently served several years in prison for operating and reselling a massive botnet and for creating and running Darknode. Until recently, the world's most bustling English language cybercrime forum. In December 2013, NiceHash CTO, I'm not going to try and butcher this name, uh, was sentenced to four years, 10 months in prison for creating the malware that powered Mariposa botnet. Very soon after, Mariposa was estimated to have infected more than 1 million hacked computers, making it one of the largest botnets ever created. They then go on to say, prior to his initial arrest in Slovenia on cybercrime charges in 2010, Skorjank was best known to his associates as Acerto, the administrator and founder of the exclusive cybercrime forum Darknode. In July 2015, authorities in the United States and elsewhere conducted a global takedown of Darknode crime forum, arresting several of its top members in the process. The U.S. Justice Department at the time said that out of 800 or so crime forums worldwide, Dark Code represented one of the gravest threats to the integrity of data on computers in the United States and around the world, and was the most sophisticated English-speaking forum for criminal computer hackers in the world. So look, I don't know if this guy is still the CTO of NiceHash. I know the CEO of NiceHash at the time stepped down. They got a new CEO. I haven't, again, I haven't heard any further hacks that have occurred or anything other sketchy that's gone on, but you know, color me surprised. Someone who's involved in, you know, a giant Bitcoin operation is a criminal or was a criminal. Yeah, uh, wow. I'm so shocked. <laughs> it's not like Bitcoin is used all over the world to buy all kinds of illegal crap because it can't be tracked. Yeah, that's just absolutely shocking. But either way, the fact of the matter is this company has had really sketchy stuff go on in the past and I really don't trust them. I think it's a really shady company and the fact that Linus uh, was promoting this company, I just find to be a little bit disappointing because if he's putting out a video that could get a million or more views and all those people are going to be you know, using a service that was at, at least at one point hiring what appears to be at least once a major criminal and honestly, if there's one major criminal working for them, there's probably a lot more. Well, then, yeah, that's just a little bit disappointing. And they should really be putting a lot more effort into vetting the type of sponsorships that they're taking from here on out. So does this video deserve all the hate? Well, I would say kind of, but as long as you keep it civil. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Linus's video deserves all the hate? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.